Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, we're here this morning going to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And uh, we hope that you here also that want to worship and to be a part of this body of Christ and uh, learn more about God's word. And uh, as we had made mention last week in the first chapter of the book of Joel, you know there's not a lot of people teaching the book of Joel. And it's very, very important. Uh, not only to have knowledge of, but to warn uh, God's children. And uh, that's what he said in verse 3. He said, tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Therefore, that means that we are to continue this on and to uh, warn the people about things that are happening and uh, going to happen around us in this time. And uh, but good to be here this morning. We're going to be in Joel chapter 2 this morning. And uh, while you're getting your Bibles this morning, we'll ask Father for his blessings, and we'll get right on into his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to stand and do thy will. We ask, Father, that you'd open eyes and open ears to your word this morning. Allow your word to land on fertile ground, Father, and we'll give you the praise and give you the glory for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Joel chapter 2, in the book of Joel, uh, in the Hebrew it means uh, Yahweh is El. And uh, that's what it means. And uh, us being in the second chapter, before we get started, I want to read some passages of Scripture to, uh, to highlight what is being said and the warning that is being given out uh, to God's election. And uh, as we read in Psalms uh, 1, I'll, uh, I'll read, and, and you don't have to turn if you don't feel uh, need to, but uh, Psalms 1 and 3, and it reads, actually, I'm going to read 1, 2, and 3. It said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And the law of the Lord is his word. And God asks that we meditate on his word as often as possible. Keep it fresh on your mind. And verse number three is why I came. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I quote that scripture a lot. Uh, I probably butcher it a little bit, but uh, wanted to go there this morning to give you an understanding how important it is uh, for you to have knowledge of the book of Joel. And I want to go one more place this morning. Turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And we'll start reading about verse number 3. And we feel as if it was very important for this lecture to bring these things out and to bring out how that God's children are sealed. And we're praying for sealing this morning. We're praying that if those that do not know what the book of Joel is speaking about, that understanding would come. So in verse number 3 in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blesses, blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This blame he's speaking of is not your everyday action uh, of uh, making the mistakes that we do. Uh, therefore, we have repentance for this. But he's talking about the blame of the shame that will come upon an individual uh, because they do not want to know God's word. Verse number five. 
having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He has uh, predestined us. In other words, uh, he has predetermined uh, our course. That's all that means. He has predetermined that we should do his will. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in the beloved because of where you stood in the first earth age. That initiates the predestination of where you stand and what you understand today and uh, where you will stand uh, at the, well, the sixth trump. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And it's none by any merit of ours. It's all and through by the grace of God that we are saved by his wonderful grace. Hmm. Verse 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. In other words, in all wisdom and insight. He has given us every angle to be aware of. He doesn't want his children to be overtaken, and therefore Father is written and rewritten and brought to prophets and brought to men and women of God to bring these things out for your own admiration, for your own safety. Verse 9 having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, he hath purposed in himself. And that what we're going to be reading in Joel chapter 2 is a mystery. It's a mystery because the majority of the world doesn't see it. Now, for the election, it's really no mystery. It's not a mystery any longer. We've studied Revelation chapter 9. We've studied Joel. We've studied the book of Jude. We've studied throughout God's word, and we know how these things are going to transpire. Therefore, it's no mystery. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, in other words, right now, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Father is sealing in the minds of the people today. In other words, waking some people up. We've uh, had discussion here before the service this morning how that uh, many people are beginning to see that this rapture theory, uh, it's not coming to pass. And uh, they're getting a little antsy. And hopefully, hopefully that we can reach some this morning and uh, reach them in love and uh, reach them in knowledge and wisdom of God's word and through the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's not of anything that I do or anything any man, woman, or boy or girl does. It's all through the Holy Spirit. If we retain it and understand it, it's all because the Spirit has given it to us. Give glory unto God because you do understand. Verse 11, In whom also we have obtained... An inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things uh, after the counsel of his own will. And as we get into chapter 2 of the book of Joel, you will see that it is God's will that these come. And you say, well, uh, that doesn't seem like it's right. Well, Father does have a negative plan. Father does use uh, many uh, in his negative plan. And uh, as Paul has said, uh, if uh, one wants to uh, be confounded and be confused and be, uh, as the word Paul used, be damned and believe a lie, then that's what God will feed them. Verse 12, that we should be uh, to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. <laughs> We first trusted in the Lord during that battle. What battle are you talking about? Well, uh, in Zechariah chapter 14, it talks about that Christ will fight again 
Revelation chapter 12, when he comes and those armies will come with him, he will fight again as he did in the day of battle. That's right. In the day of battle. In the day uh, that the revolt happened. And verse 12 again, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. It's pretty prevalent that those of the election trusted in the Lord and fought with Father and fought against the evil and fought against Lucifer. Verse 13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's one of the reasons why I came this morning to Ephesians chapter 1, so that we can get a clearer understanding that after we have heard the gospel and after we have heard the truth of his word and the Holy Spirit has delivered it to you and I, we are sealed, meaning that nothing can change our minds. Nothing can pull us away. As in Revelation chapter 3, it says that, uh, verse 11, I believe it is, that uh, keep thy crown uh, that, uh, well, let me quote that real quick. I, I, I'm liable to butcher it up. I'm, I'm good for that. I can, uh, I can quote some things, but sometimes it seems as if it gets out of my mind. I want it to be sure. And it was, verse 11, he said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The crown is the crown of life that you will win, that you will be given uh, because of the triumphant work that you have done, the spreading of the gospel, uh, the spreading of the truth, and the warning, and keeping yourself out of the system. So, he said in 13, he said, In whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And we read that this morning as an introduction for you to know that this first verse coming out the gate in chapter 2 of the book of Joel is to you, friends. So it says in Joel chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. The day of the Lord is very close. But he says here, blow ye a trumpet. And that's what we're trying to do this morning. That's what we are trying to do every time we come on a video or be the YouTube or the Facebook page, this is what we're trying to do, is to blow a warning. We have a sign outside here at the church, Fresh Start NDPM Church, and it's a warning. There's a warning sign up there, and it says, do you know when the true Christ comes? It was placed there for those who have eyes to see. It should not be a stumbling block for somebody that does not know, but it should uh, bring curiosity to the individual to know that there is going to be more than one Christ that comes. The first one that comes is a lie. So he says, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Why are we to tremble, Brother Randall? Well, we're supposed to tremble because of Joel 1 and 4. As we read last week, he said, That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. These are the four stages of the swarms, and we are to tremble. Why is this? Well, let's go down to verse number 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, that there hath not ever, excuse me, that there hath not been ever the like, neither uh, 
shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Verse number 2 gives us an understanding that even though we are sealed by the grace of God, and even though we know how these are going to transpire, that these are going to still be in our life. These are still going to be in our day as we see the Lord come. And he said, in the day of darkness and gloominess, and that's exactly what it is. And he said, in the day of clouds and of thick darkness. This uh, thick darkness and uh, any time darkness is mentioned, uh, it's deception. It means deception. And that's what is so prevalent about these locust army and about, well, uh, the palmer worm, which are the Kenites. They weave in and do all they can to bring deception, to do away with the truth of God's word. But it's people like you and I that continue to hold the torch and to burn a light and a candle until the coming of the Lord so that we can help people. Again, this is not about us being better than the next guy. It's not about us gaining so much wealth. It's about people getting help. It's about we have love for God's children. And we're looking for the body of Christ to multiply. Because we know that in Ezekiel 37, we're talking about the valley of dead dry bones. Many are going to come alive. We're hoping that something be said or done this morning to encourage others that, friend, this is not a game. This is going to happen. He said, in the morning spread upon the mountains. And as, as we see how quickly the morning sun comes and spreads clear across the mountains, I'm talking miles and miles, and it just flashes out. That's exactly how they're going to come. He said, a great people and strong. And again, these are not insects. These are not locusts and caterpillar and canker worm and, and uh, 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 palmer worm. These are people, but they are given these names uh, because of their actions and the way that they operate. He said these are a great people and strong. There hath not ever been ever uh, the like. It's never been anything like this. Now, <clears throat> made mention last week uh, that a lot of this has happened before, and the coming of these angelics has happened before, but not in the deception that they're bringing this time. The deception they're bringing this time is a deception of God's word, and the reason why it is is because, uh, well, it's so... Uh, prevalent today, God's word, and, uh, but yet they are distorting it. They're doing everything they can to take your mind off of the trueness of God's word. He said, uh, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. And this is a warning to you, friends. Verse number three, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. He's not saying that the world is going to be on fire at this time. He's saying that when they come, their deception, their lies, the fire, are, is going to be like a flame. He said, uh, fire that devoureth before them. In other words, it takes the minds of the people off God's true word and puts it on a fairy tale and puts it on their idea. And friend, let me say this. These, these angelics are going to be sharp. They're going to be wise. And it takes you knowing uh, the word of God and understanding how these are going to transpire. That's why we are defining all the words that we possibly can this morning so that you will be aware. He said, again, in verse 3, a fire devoureth before them. These are nothing than lies, okay? So lies will devour before them, and behind them a flame burneth. In other words, that what they have said, it keeps it going. There are going to be 
people, cities, nations that are going to keep it going because they truly believe this that they're saying. And they do not understand God's word. They've never been taught God's true word. Neither shall be any more. Excuse me. Verse 3. And, and the land is as the Garden of Eden. And it is today. As we see it, it is plush. It's beautiful. Beautiful being um, us being able to get the word of God out. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing for us to be able to put God's word out here and not to be, uh, well, stopped or uh, disputed. It's beautiful. It's just like the Garden of Eden before them. And yea, behind them, it's a de desolate wilderness. And it will be a wilderness because there will not be any truth in that day. There will not be any truth to be found at that time. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. I guess the question would be, do you see the need in sounding the alarm yet? It's so important that people understand that these are coming and it's going to happen. Verse number four. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. So it's giving their appearance here in Joel chapter two and verse number uh, <clears throat> four. But we also have that same concept in Revelation chapter 9. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 9 this morning. I would that you would keep your finger in 9. Now we've used 9 last week. And we're going to use chapter 9 again starting at verse number 7. And it reads, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were of the faces of men. Why was their faces like men, Brother Randall? <laughs> because they are men. Because they will be angelics in the same similitude of God, just like you and I. And they will mingle right amongst the people. If you're looking for an infestation of insects to happen in that day, you're in left field. You're not where you need to be. So, back in Joel chapter 2, verse number 5, he reads, Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. This is how they're going to leap. This is how they're going to, uh, their action is going to be. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth stubble. If you've ever burned off any ground before, you can uh, remember what that sound is like. And uh, it's a roaring sound as it takes on the dry grass and it roars on ahead of itself. That's how they're going to be. And he said that, And as a strong people set in battle array. And that is their motivation. They are here to do one thing. Just like it's spoken about in the book of the Revelations to Satan, he does this because he knows that he only has a short time. Well, that's the same concept of these angelics that will be with him. It says here in the latter part of 5, he said, uh, and as a strong people set in battle array, their battle will not be a battle of bombs and wars and guns and things of that nature. It'll be a battle in the mind. It'll be a battle whether or not you know the truth or not. That's why it is so important this day that you have your mind sealed, that you know uh, the trueness of God's word. So often as you speak to people, and I know, I, I deal with this on a daily basis, that so many people like to take God's word and twist it and try to conform it to their ideas. Uh, many would say that uh, there's no such thing as uh, uh, predestination or uh, there's no such thing as these angelics that are coming. Well, the problem with that is, is that they've never studied God's word. They have followed behind a one-verse Charlie and uh, never studied God's word like they ought to. 
Oh, it's so important this morning. We've said this many times, and I'm going to say it again. The sand of the hourglass is running out. We don't have a lot of time left. Verse number 6. Before their face, uh, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. And that's is true. He said, before their face, the people shall be much pained. And they will be much pained because the blessings of God will not come. The only blessings that they're going to get is that what Lucifer hands down to them, him being that uh, instead of Christ, uh, the uh, proclamation that was made by Daniel the prophet, saying that he will come in prosperously and peacefully, meaning that that's the only prosperity they're going to have, the only joy they're going to have. Because once it's revealed to them that they followed a lie, that's when this verse comes to play. He said, before their faces, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. And this word should not have been blackness. It should have been paleness. I don't know if, uh, if any of you have ever had shocking news or had to deliver shocking news to an individual. But you can see the countenance of an individual, how that their face turns whiter, that the blood leaves out of their face because of the shock. That's exactly what's going to happen in that day. Verse number 7, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways, uh, and they shall not break their ranks. We're talking about a very disciplined military type army. I say military because this is the army that Lucifer will bring with him. And friends, they will be disciplined. He said, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Nothing will stop them. And they shall march every one on his ways, uh, and they shall not break their ranks. Verse number 8. Neither shall one thrust another, and they will not. They will be disciplined to know to do their work for Lucifer. That is why they are here. I want to say also, they've been holding out for a long time. And I'm under the impression they'll be very excited to be here. And they will be here in a time when people are not ready for it. He said, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they shall fall upon the sword, uh, they shall not be wounded. He's not talking about taking a sword and trying to kill one of these angelics. He's talking about the word of God. And that's what's written in Revelations 1 and 16. That's what comes out of the mouth of Christ. He said it's like a two-edged sword. It cuts coming and going. But it says here that... Uh, when they shall fall upon the sword, uh, they shall not be wounded. It won't bother them that you correct them. It won't bother them that they are uh, telling lies and uh, not got their concept straight. It won't bother them. They'll continue on doing what they're supposed to do. Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows uh, like a thief. This scripture here in verse number 9, it says, They shall run to and fro in the city. And that's where they will dwell, right amongst the people, right amongst God's children, doing everything they can to distort God's word, to put in the minds of people that have not studied God's word uh, this creative idea uh, that they are come to rapture you away and uh, to uh, get you onto the side of Lucifer. Anytime during this 
fifth trump, when they are here, if one signs up and wants to gain some of the benefits of the Antichrist, it'll be held against them. They will know. They'll know exactly that they have done wrong. And it says, they shall climb up upon the houses. Let me ask you, who is it that sits upon the house? Who is it that sits on top of the house? It's supposed to be the watchman. It's supposed to be the watchman of God. That's who they're coming for. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. You say, well, all my windows are locked at the house. I'm glad of that. Well, let me ask you, do you have a sensor on your television? Do you have a sensor on your monitor, on your cell phone? Do you have a sensor in a way for them to not come in? They're going to come in, friends. They're going to enter in one way or another. In the book of Jude, we have a scripture here that I'd like to read. Four. In Jude 4, and it reads, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into last covetousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what they're going to be doing. That's exactly the motivation of these angelics. Verse number 10, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the, store, the stars shall withdraw their shining. And we see this, the same concept in Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. We know that these things are going to happen. Verse number 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. There's that negative work the negativity of God's plan. Now, let me finish this chat, this verse. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? This army that is instructed is very disciplined. And they're not only disciplined by Satan, but friends, also remember that they are disciplined by God. This is a security blanket for you and I. Knowing that we have the seal of God in our foreheads, knowing how these things are going to transpire, knowing that we are to wait upon the true Christ, that we are to be like that tree planted by the rivers of water, steadfast and unmovable, we know that this will not have any effect on you and I. It's only going to go after those that we have read about in the book of Hosea. Those that God has talked about, uh, Loami, not my people. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Only those who have the seal of God in their forehead. Only those who have studied God's word and abide in God's word. And <laughs> my mind goes to the book of the Revelation where it talked about where John was to eat that book, to eat that scroll. It was tasted like honey. But once it hit his belly, it was bitter. Friend, the word of God today is sweet. It's a sweet savor, and it's a sweet taste. Because we have been warned, God loves you. If I can do anything this morning at all and say this, God loves you to a point that he is doing all he can to warn and to explain 
and to bring out properly how these things are going to transpire. Verse number 12 in Joel chapter 2. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. He's speaking to those that we spoke about in the book of Hosea, Loami, not my people. He's talking to them, and he's asking them to do this. He said, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye to me with all your heart. That means get away from the Bethavins, get away from the houses of nothingness, Get away from the doctrinal issues uh, that hold you back. This rapture theory and this idea of any moment. And fasten your minds on the true word of God. Verse 13. God says, and rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. In other words... He wants you to return. Many uh, that would listen to this ministry have gained salvation. They've accepted Christ Jesus as their personal Savior. But they have went away from the Lord through traditions of man. They have pulled themselves away from God's Word, the trueness of God's Word, and listened to traditions of man. So, he said, and turn, in other words, return, would you, unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger, and a great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. God wants his children to understand how these things are going to transpire. Verse number 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? This meat offering is the truth of God's word. And in the days that these angelics will be here, there won't be any truth spread. There won't be any fresh start being able to spread the gospel like they'd like to, they'll put a stop to it. They'll put a stop to these things. That's why it's so important today that you fasten your mind on how these things are going to transpire. Verse 15. Here it is again. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. This is a warning from Father. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell everybody. Tell them. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Put together this time of fasting. Doing without. Clearing your mind. What's a fast do? It cleanses you. Therefore, God wants you to be cleansed. Call a solemn assembly. This is the church. This is the people uh, that are supposed to be the body of Christ. But the way that they are showing themselves today, they're of no body of Christ. Call a solemn assembly. Do everything you can to warn the public. And God being our helper, we want to do that. We want to be that number. We want to be that part that helps people, that brings understanding to people, and to let them know how important, how strong of an urgency that there is in this. Verse 16, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, 
gather the children and those that suck the breast, and let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. It's all because of the wedding that is going to take place. Is what he's speaking here. It's all because God wants many to be in his wedding. God wants many to be at that wedding day. God wants all of his children. God would that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. Father loves his children, and he's doing everything possible, short of coming down himself. He sent a love letter for those to understand what is going to happen. You say, well, it don't sound much like a love letter to me. Sounds kind of scary. This should not be scary. This should not be a thing that scares an individual, especially a child of the king. This should be an understanding. This should go right along and sit right in there with the ceilings uh, in the minds of the individual, those that have studied the word of God. It's so important. He said, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders. In other words, get everybody together that has the understanding. Gather the children. It's important that you teach the children. It's so important today that we teach our children what is going to happen. As a minister of God, I know what the Word of God says, and the Bible teaches me that no man knoweth the day or the hour, the coming of the Lord. If I go before the coming of the Lord, whom is going to take the torch and carry it on? We hope that it is the children. We hope it's the children that will continue on this work and warn the people and stand and do a work for the Lord before these trumps come about. Assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. He's talking about those that are still on the milk, those that are just flabbergasted about salvation, and that's the only way I can put it. I, I, I believe that's the, <laughs> the motivation of these. They're just so flabbergasted about the love that God has for them and salvation that they keep continually sticking to that. They are under the impression that uh, people need saved again and again and again. But he says here, and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom come forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. He's looking for a chaste virgin this morning. He's looking for those that are willing to put up a stand against the Antichrist, to put up a stand against this world and stand for the true God. Verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between, between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? You may have wondered why I went to Psalms 1 this morning at the beginning, and this is the reason. I'm going to read verse 4 says, the ungodly are not so, meaning they're not like verse 3, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. 5, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners uh, in the congregation of the righteous. 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we know there's a reason for the ministers in that to pray and to weep between the porch and the altar. 
verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. After these things have come to pass, after this horde of angels have come to pass, we have in Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 43, we have a passage of scripture here that's very important. He said, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. I guess the question would be, how much of God's word do people truly believe? Many believe that, oh, Brother Reynolds, you're reading out of Deuteronomy 32. That was back in the days of Moses. Or what, what good is that for us today? Well, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11 tells us that Paul said that these things are written for our ensamples, for our examples, for us to go by and to learn. And as we read there uh, last week uh, in the first book of uh, Ecclesiastes, that there is no new thing under the sun. All these things that have happened before, it's going to happen again. Verse 18, he said, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. We're so thankful for that this morning, that God, through all of his busy work, he still can take time out and know where his children are. Verse 19, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. This is God's proclamation. He's proclaimed this because of what the heathens uh, have done and what they are about to do. Verse 20, But I will remove far off from you the northern army. The northern army, uh, in, in Ezekiel chapter 39, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. And as you read in Ezekiel 40 and on through, you'll find that there will be those that will be sought out for eternal employment. In other words, they're going to be digging graves for a long time because of this army here that he's talking about. This is talking about Rush. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. And God will do great things. God will bring everything into view. There will be nothing hidden and it will all be rejuvenated to a place where you and I will be taken care of. He said in verse 22, Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine doeth yield their strength. And this is after what has happened uh, when they go through and make it as a desolate wilderness. God will bring it back in the days of the millennial. We will have uh, this understanding. He said in verse number 23, he said, 
Be glad then, ye children of Zion. He's talking to you this morning. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will call to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. This is God's promise. And if one was to wonder what it was that Peter was speaking about in Acts chapter 2, it's this here. He's talking about the rain that will come down and this being the Spirit of God that will pour out upon his people. He will take it at a time when God's children will be delivered up before the synagogue of Satan. And Christ has told us about that in Matthew 24. He said, Predestined, he said, uh, premeditate not what you are to say, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, for it will not be you that speak, but the Holy Spirit of God. And that's when that latter rain will pour out upon God's children. He has given us this former rain. He's given us this now. He's sealing in the minds of the people this understanding and this concept how it's going to happen. But he's going to give us courage and give us strength. Strength beyond what this human body can understand. It will be the Holy Spirit that will speak through you and I. If that is that we are delivered before the Antichrist. You say, well, I, I don't understand that being delivered before the Antichrist. Why will we be delivered before the Antichrist? Well, in Matthew 24... He plainly tells us that we are to be prepared for this hour. Uh, verse 36, chapter 24, he said, But at... But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You say, well, Brother Randall, I think we see a lot of that today. I think we see a lot of what the days of Noah was like. Amen. 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Is there a flood coming? Yes, there is a flood coming. It's not of rainwater, but it's a flood of lies, a flood of lies that will take over the people. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. You don't want to be the one that falls after the first Jesus that comes. You don't want to be the first taken. You don't want to be that one that is already on the bandwagon for the Antichrist. You want to be like that one in Psalms 1, verse 3. Planted by the rivers of water. Planted, standing fast, waiting for the Lord. 41.2 Women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 40, it talks about the field. What is the field? The field is the world. That's where we're supposed to be working. You're not supposed to be taken out of the field. And you're surely not supposed to be taken uh, out of season. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth cometh. Man does not know exactly the hour, but man, we can sure know the events that will transpire before the coming of the Lord. Verse 23, back in Joel chapter 2. <clears throat> Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given, I've read that verse 24. Let me go on down to 24. 
and the floors uh, shall be full of wheat. These are your thrashing floors. And the fats shall over overflow uh, with wine and oil. In other words, truth for every man, woman, boy, and girl. There will not be a shortage. There will not be a distortion. It will be the truth that will come and flow from God. Verse 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Please know, Please know that this is going to happen. These will be amongst our people. These will be in this world as we know it. And it is the army of God. As long as you have the seal of God in your mind, as long as you know that these are going to happen, and you do not listen to what they have to say, you do not partake in anything they have to offer, then you are fine. 26, and ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that he hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Let me ask you this morning, has God not dealt wondrously with you thus far? God has sealed in your mind and brought out truths and revealed the mysteries of his word and corrected your mind in many different ways. It's all because God loves and he loves you. This goes down to an individual basis. Not every man, woman, boy, and girl in this world has the seal of God in their foreheads. Those today that do understand, he's asked here that we are to praise him. He said, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that he hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Never. Romans 1 and 16 comes to mind. It says, Be ye not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of salvation unto the Greek and unto the Jew. And God has a desire to bring all of his children. Which ones? The white ones? The yellow ones? The black ones? The red? Friend, all are God's children. And he loves them. He's doing everything to tell them that this is going to happen. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. God is pouring out his spirit this morning. And he's doing everything possible through this ministry to let people know that he wants to feed. He wants to protect. He wants to clothe. He wants to do everything possible for his children. He said that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And in that day when they are delivered up. Before the synagogue of Satan. God's spirit will be upon them. Verse 29. And also. Now this is an, an addition. Not an exception. But an addition to what he said he would do. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens uh, in those days will I pour out my spirit.
if you take this word servants, you would have to understand that it kindly does degrade an individual, but not in the eyes of God. It does in man's eyes because they are servants to others. But Father said he's no respecter of persons and that he's not going to leave out the servants. He's going to bring out his spirit and pour it out upon them. He's talking about the working man. He's talking about that one that puts his nose to the grindstone, but yet still he's going to pour out his spirit upon them, and people are going to listen to him. And not only them, he said, and upon the handmaidens in the days will I pour out my spirit. Very unlikely that we have many rapturists that listen to this ministry. But if they were, this is what I would say to them. That God is no respecter of persons. And women can prophesy just as well as men can. I heard a lot of women say, yeah, man. And the truth is the truth. It's not about a man or a woman. It's about doing the work of God. God's work going forward and helping people. It's about the love. The love that we are to have for an individual and to care about their soul. Their soul is precious. And that's what Satan has come to do. To steal, kill, and destroy your soul. Verse 30. And I will shew wonders uh, in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. These are the signs of the times. This is what Father said he would do. 31, the sun shall be turned into darkness. This is nothing more than an eclipse. And the moon into blood. This is what we've seen. We've seen these blood moons. Before the great and terrible, in other words, notable day of the Lord come. God has shown us in many different ways, in many different events, his power. But for the average individual, they would just look upon these as uh, incidences that happen and go on and never really place it in God's word. But God's election will. God's election will open their eyes and notice that through Mount St. Helens as it erupted, God showed a face of a man through that. You think it was by chance that a photographer was uh, around Yellowstone at the time and he was uh, seeing and, and taking photos of uh, Mount St. Helens? I don't think so, my friend. I think it was there for you, for you to know. God said this would happen. Verse 32 to come to a close. And it shall come to pass. Please underline that in your mind. If you don't write in your Bible, please underline it in your mind because these things will come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And there is deliverance in Mount Zion. There's deliverance today. All one has to do is have their minds opened to the truth. And it's done by you spreading the seed. It's done by you giving out this warning, sounding an alarm. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. God has a perfect plan. And for us to be a part of that plan, we must be ready. We must be sealed and stand on that firing line. 
In Mark 13, verse 9, he said, Take ye heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils and to the synagogues, and ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. And it will be when God's election are delivered before the council. They will be on closed circuit TV. They will be on news breaks. And it will. The word of God will be published throughout the world at that time. Unlike what many would like to think today that they have missionaries here and have missionaries there and they're placing the word of God all the friend missionary work is a wonderful thing salvation is solely important but you and I both know that it takes more than just salvation to be able to overcome this locust army verse 11 but when they shall lead you and deliver you up Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit of God. Joel, his three chapters in this book are so important for God's children today. You men and women listening this morning, you have children, you have grandchildren, you have nieces and nephews. You have children around you that need to know these things. They need to be prepared. The best way to explain this concept is by using the Word of God. And it helps to direct an individual to know that these things are going to happen. I'm not frightened for God's election, but I do have a concern for those that do not know the Word of God. I do have a concern for those that do not understand, that like to hold on to a rapture theory, hold on to an any moment doctrine, and then be fooled by the first one that shows upon the scene. Do all you can. We're going to do all we can to warn the people. That's Joel chapter 2. What a blessing it's been. Wow, what a wonderful spirit that God has placed upon this little church this morning and the ability to be able to teach the way we ought to. Now, I, before I forget, uh, let's not forget that on the 25th of this month, the 25th of September, we will be having our Feast of Tabernacles service. We will be having a commune service directly afterwards, and we would love for you to be a part of that. So don't forget, uh, we'll do our best to remember, uh, to remind the people that this is going to happen on the 25th, and we will be having Holy Commune on that day. And uh, we're looking forward to that, and I hope that you are too. Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.